are continuing our playthrough of the Curse of Strahd, as if you couldn't read the big white letters across the top of the screen. Um, with us today, we have Debrock Darkstone, the Dwarven Sorcerer. We have Iona, the Halfling Rogue. Mm -hmm. I derped. <laughs> I derped. Um, <laughs> we have Barkley, the Tiefling Druid. And we have Hoppa, the Tortle Paladin. And the last time we were here, the party had been uh, ensnared by the wiles of the Death House. They were lured inside by the illusion of two uh, children in need. And once inside, they endured all of the horrors and managed to barely escape with their lives. Now today, um, we are picking up right where we left off. The party is standing in the middle of the dirt road. The death house is crumbling and, and uh, destroying in front of their very eyes. And now the party begins to realize that the death house wasn't the only illusion that was cast upon you. The, actually, the entire city that you believe to be standing in was a part of the illusion. And as it all dissolves and disappears from around you, you realize you're still in the woods. So let me shift your attention should be looking at a black screen because I haven't placed your tokens yet. Maybe. Nope, not him. That one. That one. And that one. So, you're standing here on a dark road. Does everybody have vision? Everybody good? Might have to scroll to the right about midway down. Yeah, found me. Oh, I found me. Yeah. Okay. So, um, standing here, you can see black pools of water standing like dark mirrors in and around the muddy roadway. Giant trees loom on both sides of the road, their branches clawing at the mist. Obviously, everyone is very confused as to what just happened. Because a moment ago, you were inside of a city, and now the entire illusion has worn away, and you're standing here in the woods. So, where do we want to go, people? <laughs> There's very long awkward silence there for some reason. That was a very long awkward silence. Um, I, I was also doing a mod <laughs> job for somebody, but hello. Hi. I'll turn to the try. woods and I'll shout hello. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh. So, Don't we're going to take a rest, are we? Um, yes. I, I wouldn't imagine that we needed to after we've not been for a week, but... Yeah, we'll take a rest. <laughs> I, I believe at the end of the last session, everybody should... It, I'm, I'm seeing everybody at full health. So. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, as you look further down the road, you see that the fog spills out of the forest to swallow up the road behind you. Ahead, jutting from an impenetrable woods on both sides, are high stone buttresses looming gray in the fog. Huge iron gates hang on the stonework. Dew clings with cold tenacity to the rusted bars, and two headless statues of armed guardians flank the gate. Their heads now lying among the weeds at their feet, they greet you only with silence. Well, that's rude. Hmm. Are they, uh, can I try and open the gate? Yep. Was that the gate squeaking? <laughs> yeah, oh, apparently. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> that was the kid raiding the snack closet. <laughs> but yes, it was our plan. They <laughs> opened the legit. Gate. I timed that perfectly. That's funny. <laughs> okay, yes, the gate opens easily. It makes a squeaky noise as it hinges open. My god, this sounds like a cupboard, and I will carry on walking down the path. Um, I hope the rest of the party nah, follow yeah. me, and I, I beckon Iona to follow, and then the rest, and hopefully they are. Come in! Eh. Oh, I'm on you, sorry. Yeah. I'm climbing on Alright. I like climbing on you. <laughs> <laughs> Towering trees whose tops are lost in heavy gray mist block out all but a death gray light. The tree trunks are naturally close to one another, and the woods have the silence of a forgotten grave. It exudes the feeling of an unvoiced scream. A breeze rolls through, and you catch the scent of death on the air. I'm gonna run. <laughs> uh, that smells pretty, and I turn around. And, um, okay, uh, can I carry on going down the path, or can I investigate to see if I see anything else in the woods other than uh, the mist and the trees? You see trees. Um, yeah, you can do an investigation check. Oh, this might suck. Okay. Um, as you look around from where you're standing, you're not able to see anything of note, but as you turn and look, you do... You are able to tell that the smell seems to be coming from that direction. Let's not go in that direction. I want to go travel and investigate in the smell. Ugh. Why? Because it's <laughs> death and I'm a paladin. Makes sense. You're dirty. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. The, uh... The foul scent leads you to a human corpse, half buried in the underbrush about 15 feet from the road. The young man appears to be a commoner. His muddy clothes are torn and raked with claw marks. Crows have been at the body, which is surrounded by paw prints. The man has been dead for what appears to have been several days. He holds a crumpled envelope in one hand. Can I approach and pick up the envelope? Yes. Uh, as you pick it up, you see that the letter has a large B set into the wax seal. Are you going to open it? Yes, I am. I'm trying to find it. Wait a minute. Oh, I see. Uh, Kolian Indirovich. That's the one. Show to everyone. <laughs> so you see, uh, the letter says, Hail to thee of might and valor. I, a lowly servant of Barovia, send honor, lo thee. We plead for thy t so desperately needed assistance. The love of my life, Irina Kulyana, has been afflicted by an evil so deadly that even the good people of our village cannot protect her. She languishes from her wound, and I would have saved her from this menace. There is much wealth in this community. I offer all that might be had to thee, so that thy fellows shall thou but answer my desperate plea. Come quickly, for her time is at hand. All that I have shall be thine. Kolyan Indirovich, Burgomaster. What's a uh, Burgomaster? Uh, like, think of like a mayor, you know, in charge of a, a small area, not, not too, too powerful. Uh, after reading the letter, I'll ask if um, everybody wants to go try and find where this woman is and try and help her. Hells yes. Okay. As uh, you were standing there having this discussion, you hear a howling coming from the woods around you. 
Again? Again! Can I hold back? If you really want to. <laughs> I don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you guys hear me? Okay. Was... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I was cutting out for a minute. I just want to make sure. Um, right. Is the is the howling getting closer, or is it just? Uh, you it's just hear it? definitely getting closer. It's really, <sighs> really close. Oh my god! There's, a, there's two giant wolves. When the hell? Why are they so big? I'm gonna tame one and ride it. <laughs> <laughs> I can ride one normal sized. I'm gonna pull a thok. A thok? Cade, one of them, and try to ride the thing that we're fighting. Well, before you do that, you got a real initiative. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Gotta make the howling sound. Ah, oh, the, but the moment is past. You already missed it. Drats. Oh, there you go. Oh, Iona did it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think my initiative rolls like me. If you clicked on yourself. Mine don't either, but it makes I, up for I the did. fact that I'm okay. about to fog cloud everything. So. Yeah, I don't see. Uh, I don't see you uh, on the list. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. There you are. It was delayed. It was, that was so. It twice. Oh. I clicked okay. myself the first Snarl, time because I moved, didn't I? But it wouldn't. Wanna... Alright. Uh, looks like Snarl has the first. Ah, I can't. Snarl. Damn it. Barkley. I don't know. Yes. Is this dog on top of me? Uh, he's he's right next to you. The, the map is a uh, hexagon grid, so some of the things kind of overlap. He is adjacent, not on top of you. Look in your face. He's in your face. Oh, I'll do Shillelagh and smack it. Oh. Oh, puppy. I have to pull up my character sheet. And then we're going to look at those rolls. 21 to hit. That is definitely a hit. And then uh, 12 damage. Okay. Anything else? Nope, I'll stay here. Alright, hop up. Uh, how close are they to me? Are they both like in the same sort of distance? Uh, about half of a meter away. The heck is this map? Yeah, because it's hexagon. I thought I always thought that the hexagon ones each square meant like quarter of a mile or something. Yeah, it's distance. it's half a mile or quarter of a mile per square. So yeah, this is this is the uh, the world map. So ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, but I mean, look look at the size of you in the grid. Like yeah. it's <laughs> yeah, the, the maps are quite um, they're not very nice. Yeah. Well, because these ones are not a... not made for combat. You know. Yeah. They're... Can I uh, take a step to the one that? So uh, just above me and swing at him. Yep. My warhammer. Yeah, the, I'm gonna say that the furthest one away, this one down here, down here. Anyway, um, that he's only maybe 15 feet away. Okay. Like the the entire pack is on top of you. So yes, you can step forward and bash the wolf with the hammer. Okay, that's a hit for eight. Um, no, that'll be no, that'll be my turn. Okay, Thank now you. it's the wolves' turn, and the wolves, the one that Hoppa attacked, is going to retaliate and try to bite. It's a hit for seven. The... I'll tell it when he comes back down. Okay. Here, I'll just go ahead and uh, mark his life already. All right, yeah. Um, the wolf that Barkley attacked is going to bite him as well. No. Fourteen is a hit for seven. And now the two wolves down here, here, and here, 
they are going to both attack the Brock and they're going to um, they're going to have advantage because you're adjacent to the both of them and they have pack tactics I'll go ahead and link it so everybody can see what it is so here is the first bite against the Brock it's a hit for 12 and then the second. The Brock don't die. 17 is a hit for another 12. Nice, we're all going to die again. <laughs> Get wrecked, <laughs> son. And then the last wolf is going to come up and attack Iona. Oh, God. With advantage, because you're adjacent to this one, too. I think. No, you're not. Okay, fine. Aha. Uh, hit for 10. Kiss you, ducky. All right, the Brock. <laughs> yeah, I'm not having none of this. Um, I'm going to use... I'll take cover. Uh, we're probably going to need to take a long rest after this, but I'm going to use Scorching Ray. Scorching Ray. All right. All three on him. Okay, it's a hit. That's one missile. Yep. Well, you could just click the uh, the name Scorching Ray over oh, and over. Yeah, I could just do that. <laughs> yeah. So there's two, nine, nine, and the last one counted the crit, so it's nine, nine, six. Yep. And then so I'm going 15? to spend two sorcery points to twine it and attack the one next to it with the same spell because twine twin okay twin twinned yeah <laughs> look you turned your spell into twine that doesn't seem very effective they're not cats they're dogs they I assume that string. hits yeah you have to you have to roll separate damage this, the spell yeah. is is twinned so 26 is a hit and then you have 5, 8, and 7. So 15, 20? 20. Yep. Okay. That was a pretty impressive turn. Did a ton of damage. Are you finished? Uh, uh they're within 5 feet of me. Yeah, I guess I'm finished and dead. <laughs> Alright, Iona. I'm going to short sword the one close. Oh, Rapier, the one next to me. The one that bit me. Okay, uh, you will sneak attack because Hoppa is next to it as well. Oh, so I forgot four. what my sneak attack was. Uh, at level three, I have no idea. No, I, mean, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember what even the dice was. It, it should be in your. Uh, well, if you click on your character, there's a button up there for sneak attack. Oh, yeah. But I believe I put it on your sheet. Oh, uh, what's return? Shown the sneak attack column of the rogue table. No, I didn't. I'm bad. <gasps> Let me check the player's handbook. I want to say it's it's two d six at level three, but I'm not. Yeah, two d six level three. Hey, good time to come back. There you go. <laughs> Which means I need to change the button. Uh, next sneak time you do it, two d six at level three, and then it increases again at five. Next time you do it, you're going to just type slash roll 2d6 instead of doing it twice. I didn't know. That's if I did one and then did the other. But I know well, the, the, ne the next time, the uh, the button will be updated for All 2d6. Right, okay. Just changed it. Alright, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And do you have any further actions? Oh, no, that's me. I'm going to hide behind. No, I'm actually going to stay where I am. Yeah, I'll stay here. Okay, Snow. I think I'm gonna go uh, next to Debrack and use Cure Wounds on him. Okay. So Debrack heal for five. 
<laughs> Move this out of the way. You're annoying. Okay, uh, anything else? No. No. Barkley. Barkley. <laughs> no. Alright then, Hoppa? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, um... I'm gonna smack the, the same one that I hit last time, because I, I, I can't really tell on the field how, which ones have been hit the most, can I? Um... Mine have. Yeah, well, you, from the combat you've seen, these two took massive amounts of damage from Debrock's spells. But all of them have been attacked um, at once. The one that hit Iona is the one I'll hit then. I'll, I'll change the target and hit that one. Okay. Okay. Nothing else? Uh, no, nothing else. Thank you. Alright. Uh, the Dire Wolves are going to take their turn now. Any attacking Iona will be at disadvantage. Yay! Any attack at, at Iona, you said? Yeah. Because they're within five feet of me, and I don't think the other two are. Okay. So, this wolf... Is going to come closer and attack Hoppa. Dang it. Overlapping parts. <laughs> so we're going to attack Hoppa. Um, this wolf. And he has advantage because of pack tactics. 19. So that's, oh, that's a hit, yeah. 14. This wolf as well. <laughs> hit again for 12 yeah, and I'm unconscious and then no. the last wolf will attack Iona with disadvantage um, so 7 and this wolf here is going to attack Barkley jeez my rolls are on it man <laughs> that's not it's good for you guys <laughs> 10 damage to, to Barkley. And use then... Oh, you use your reaction? Uh, what for? Okay. Okay, and you cast it at level 2. So... It has to be level 2. Oh, okay. Uh... It takes 10 damage. And the last wolf is going to attack Debrock. And hit for 14. Debrock is also unconscious. You. Yeah. Alrighty, it looks like Whirlstorm is buying a wild magic surge. Oh, 5, 4, 9, 9. And where is this uh, magic surge going? Five, four. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hapa. Okay. Uh, you'll give one chance to reroll before I declare what it does. You're gonna reroll. Okay. We're gonna continue with the turns. Uh, Debrock, can you go ahead and make a death save, please? All right, that's a pass. Eight five one seven. And after that, it is Iona's turn. I'm gonna the rapier, the one that bit me last. This one here. A pass. <laughs> well, okay. So you you missed your attack. Uh. Wait, did you? Yes, you did. You missed your attack. Huh. And the wild magic surge. Um, oh god! 
It says, all females oh. within 60 yards think they're covered in bugs. <laughs> My god, I'm covered in bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Get him off me! <laughs> so, Iona starts to panic. And, they're not spiders, uh, are they? No, they're, they're bugs. Uh, yeah, spiders. And, no! and flies. <laughs> and... And all types of other monstrosities. So spiders eat the flies. It's fine. <laughs> you're you're going to be incapacitated on your next turn because uh, you're too preoccupied to take any other action other than trying to shake off these imaginary bugs. Damn bugs! All right, uh, Barkley. I'll do some more healing, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Okay, um, so healing word and cure wounds. Who's getting the uh, cure wounds? Um, Deprog. Okay, so you stand up, and then where's the healing word going? To Hapa. So he is at seven. Okay. Hapa? I know. Is a sanctuary a bonus action spell or is it a full action spell? Let me uh, look at your sheet. I have no idea. Player character is Hoppa. Sanctuary. Yep, casting time, one bonus action. So for my bonus action, I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself. Okay. And then for my standard action, I'm going to smack the wolf that made me unconscious. Okay. <laughs> that would be this one here. Actually, no, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds upon myself as well. Okay. Okay. So now the dire wolves will get their turn, and uh, this wolf here will attack Barkley and miss. The second wolf will attack Hoppa, make a wisdom saving throw, uh, must choose a new target or lose the attack. Uh, he is not in a position to attack anyone else, so he will lose it. The next wolf, the one that's been attacking Iona, will attack again. Oh. <laughs> I'm so, down. Yep, Iona is unconscious. Sorry. I, I didn't impose anything upon it. No, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> At least I got rid of the um, bugs. It, it wouldn't have mattered either way because you're incapacitated, so that's an advantage plus a. If I impose disadvantage, it's just a straight roll, so it will still be a natural 20. Okay. Um, the next dire wolf is going to attack Barkley again. And 14 is a hit, so take 7, please. And then the remaining wolf will attack DeBrock and hit for 9. Cool. All right, so Brock. Hey guys, I'm gonna do something. It's probably gonna, <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna cast Fog Cloud. I was waiting. <laughs> Give me that spell description. All right, 20 foot radius of fog. Draw shape. 
Damn it. Draw a shape. And twenty feet radius. <laughs> centered on you I mean it's at a point in range so so where are you dropping it uh, so that it covers our team okay yes. all right so now everybody's in the fog I can't see yeah end of turn <laughs> Okay, uh, Iona? Oh, you're unconscious. Make a, uh, death, death save, save, please. Yeah. That's one failure. Alright, Snow? Can I wild shape into a wolf? Yes, you can. Do I need a sheet or something? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> Are you? It depends on the wolf, doesn't it? Uh, no, he's it turning into it. Wolf, all the wolves that we currently have in front of us. No, the wolves that are currently in front of you are dire wolves, and you wouldn't be able to to. They would not be eligible for wolves. wild shape, but you can see this. Which, there at the bottom, it tells you the uh, actions that you can take. And the abilities that you would gain. Keen hearing and smell, pack tactics. Um, your AC is 13. You have 11 hit points. Okay. A, that's a higher D AC than mine. What'd you say? I said that's a higher AC than I have. Yeah. Do I still have an action? Um, no. Your wild shape is an action. Okay, that's my turn then. Hoppa. Well, okay, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna hit one of the. The wolf that's mainly been attacking myself and Iona, and I'm gonna hit it uh, and add Divine Smite. Okay, you are attacking with disadvantage because of the fog. Yeah. Look but at I that! Am... Look at that spread. One twenty. <laughs> so you got the one. Ninety-seven. Oh, that's nothing happens. Okay, so you just yeah. you missed. Okay, I've got a one, so I thought it was a critical fail roll thing. No, it, it is a critical fail, but 97 is nothing happens. Like, if that's what it says on the table. Oh, thank god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hit myself in the face. Yay! Alright, um... The wolves are gonna take their turn. <coughs> they would normally have advantage because of pack tactics. The fog is going to remove that because now they have disadvantage. Alright, so, first wolf. Attacking Snarl the wolf. With disadvantage. With, well, they're just, it's a normal... Uh, well, if it's just a straight wall, if I impose disadvantage, doesn't that just put it out? Oh, oh, I, I understand. I didn't know that's what you were doing. Okay, yes, now he has disadvantage. And he attacked twice for, for some reason. It's the first attack, the nine, so it's a miss. The second wolf here, attacking Hoppa. Yep, and that's a hit for six. Just, just can you stop your rolls, please? <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I think it's broken. It's broken. Uh, the next one, attacking Iona. Eight. Is I'm a miss. already tired. Well. <laughs> These wolves are bastards. What do you want? Well, it missed. 
It's not a hit. Oh, okay. I was like... Uh, the next wolf... Put the grass next to me. A 14 versus Snarl is a hit. Uh, you're... Here, let me change that. You're at 11 and 13. And then you take 10 damage. You're at, you're at one hit point as a wolf. <laughs> and then the last wolf attacking DeBrock with the... Well, 12. That's my AC. Take 10. Yeah, I'm out. Okay. Uh, DeBrock, it's your turn. It's a pass. Okay. Iona, the death save, please. That's your second fail, correct? Yep. Okay. Um, at this point, you hear a voice. And it says, well, this simply will not do. And you hear a snap of the fingers. And the fog disappears. And... God damn it. And the wolves back off. And you guys see, standing here, watching everything, is a mysterious figure. I mean, at this point, isn't there only one of us that's still awake? <laughs> uh, no, Snall is awake, and Hoppa Barkley. is awake. Oh, Hoppa's awake? Okay. Barkley! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Um, I'll say hello, good sir, and look confused at the snapping of the finger, Sam. He he stands with his hands folded in the small of his back, and he's looking down at you over his nose. You can tell that he seems very displeased with everything. Uh, did we not do well enough for you? No. No, you did not. This is actually a major disappointment. Give us time and we'll show you something you've never seen before. Oh, I doubt it. You wouldn't be the first group that I've allowed into my domain. Just, just. But you, a... you surely won't be the last to disappoint me. We won't disappoint you. Um. At this point, wouldn't my sense be kicking off, like straight away, with a character this powerful in front of me? Um, yes, you get a strong, a overwhelming even sense of just dread that this figure standing in front of you is unremarkably evil. And he says, well, uh, I will leave you to, uh, to your own devices. I'm sure uh, you may yet amuse me in some way or other. And the figure uh, turns and begins to walk away. And the wolves fall in line behind him. Oh, I suppose I better get you midgets up and I'll cast Cure Wounds on the owner. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> change the roll 20 name it actually like it the roll 20 name is correct like it says barkley but i for some reason in the turn tracker it still says snarl and and i think that's why it keeps throwing me off because i look up there to see whose turn it is and then i say okay it's your turn iona it's your turn snarl and then i go fuck no not snarl <laughs> it's <laughs> Isn't there a wolf, like, standing in the middle of the party now as well? Yes. Yep. Yeah. That was obscured at the time. Can I turn back? Yes, you, you can You can end your wild shape at, at any time. I would like to end it. <laughs> okay, your AC is back to 14, and your life is at 7, what it was before you wild shaped. That was productive! So... So do I make another death saving throw? 
Uh, you are currently still unconscious. Can correct? I heal him? Yes, you can heal. I would like to heal him. With cure wounds. Okay. Cool. So, now what are you guys doing? Can we rest now, or...? Oh, the uh, bug's gone from me. Yeah, the, uh... <laughs> being unconscious has ended the uh, effects of the wild magic. Good. And... <laughs> Um, Barkley turns to the party and says, should we, should we rest? And as he does, you hear yet another howl coming from the woods. No, I think we should probably run. And <laughs> we, we should take off down the path. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the hell out of here. As you are running, you see a sign that denotes this as the old Zvalich Road. And then up ahead, you see the lights and of, uh, you know, candles in windows. And you can see the shape of buildings hanging high above the, in the horizon. Maybe refuge, maybe death. We're going to have to run to it anyway. <laughs> you can go first. Carry I'm on like, behind. I'm, I'm fine with either at this point. Let's go. Speaking. <laughs> So, I teleported some hell. <laughs> you guys approach the town and find yourselves. It's because I haven't placed your token yet. <laughs> and find mm. yourselves standing here in a uh, small ramshackle town. You see that most of the buildings are uh, composed of wood, but many of them seem to be um, quite old and in varying stages of disrepair. Can I look for any signs or anything that are pointed into an area we can uh, stay without being stabbed or murdered? Can, can I look for the <laughs> biggest building in the uh, town that's usually generally an inn? Um... From where you're standing, no, you can't really see. The The buildings are all too densely uh, placed together to really see past them. But you do see that you're standing at the mouth to the main road. Okay. Do we see any people? Um, there are a couple uh, townsfolk standing in the streets or, or sitting in their... Looking out their windows or standing on their porches. Um, all of them, however are staring at you wide-eyed and you can see some of them have fear open in their faces it's because we've got a gi giant turtle with us isn't it <laughs> freaky guy don't be judging on my appearance <laughs> can i approach someone and ask if there's an inn nearby okay uh you approach one uh young gentleman and as you do you can see that the expression of fear on his face changes to outright terror, and he turns and runs and hides inside a nearby building. But I'm not scary. I, I Any think person? I should. I, um, I think, I think I'm gonna Barkley, look can you do a a perception check for me, please? Yeah, I, I think I think you have the highest wisdom in the party. That's why I'm turning to you. Okay. Um you realize that all of the people that you see they're all human and this is a, in stark contrast to what you remember in, from the sword coast whereas there's all types of different races halflings uh dragonborns you know elves etc etc every single person you see in this village is a human mm, that's weird i don't know why they're scared the of us that they're weird <laughs> they're weird. Why, why are they weird? You've got, you've all got human. horns That's for weird. God's sake. And I'm a turtle. Yeah, and they don't. They're weird. I'm a small human. 
pass as a human or just put my I'm, my hair over my ears. I'm I'm a more burly human, but I'm also small, so and bald. And uh has it been a day? You got bald in twice, Since... you had like two days of it. Has it been a day? Oh, has your hair grown back? Yeah. No, not yet. No, not yet. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> uh, can I start making my way down the main street and see if I can find like a something that resembles an inn? From what Absolutely. I yep. God damn it! I'm gonna open my door. I'm gonna do the same thing, keeping eye contact with every single person I see. <laughs> Freak them out. That's just mean. I'm gonna no, climb on Paul's back. It, I'm gonna I'm gonna basically try to use my feature to help. Okay. Okay, so do we have okay. a matching order of people that we're going in? Am I going yeah, first? Yeah, I'm on your back. Well, oh, great, again. <laughs> I'm I'm poorly. Carry me. <laughs> As you guys are walking through town, you get the same reception that you did here at the edge. Uh, wide-eyed stares, people actively avoiding talking with you. But you do see a, a couple buildings that are, seem to be much larger and stand out. One being here, in the center of town. And then you see another larger building down here, and down here. Which one are you um, investigating first, uh, Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna fly down there. Ah, ah! <laughs> Told you. Uh, and as, as we stand at the uh, the crossroads, Whoa, I'm going to tell... Did the portal get smaller? Uh, yeah, he did. He shrunk. Oh, Apparently, man, I, I shrunk like four foot. I put him in the wash. Sorry. Um, as we approach the crossroads, I'll ask which building yeah. which building would look more inviting to the party. Either the one next to me or the one just around that corner. Because I kind of told, you know. Well, as you're standing here... Um... From the largest building to the north, you can see that a single shaft of light thrusts uh, illumination from the large windows into the into the square. And inside, you can see many different tables with uh, people sitting at them, with what appear to be plates of food and mugs of ale. Um, I think that's the inn, guys. Should we go there? Yes, we should. I Let mean, the dwarf go first. I kind of want to go check the other one out now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ignore him and just walk straight to the inn. I'm going go to go to this one. I'm going to go to this one. Sorry, my phone's going up. Oh, I'm going with Sol, so I'm stuck on his back. I'm sleeping. Right. Sleeping on his back. And what about you, uh, Barkley? Are you going with them to the inn, or are you following the bracket? Yeah, I'll, I'll go to the inn. Okay, so let's uh, do the ones at the end first, and then we'll see what the Brock is doing. Rip. Okay. <laughs> so who um, knows? Maybe I find a magic shop that has a bunch of free items there. Mm. <gasps> Only when you kill the shop owner. <laughs> Wait, <Yeah>. where? <laughs> As you guys walk up um, above the gaping doorway, you see a sign hanging uh, precariously askew, and. It, the sign proclaims that this is the Blood and Vine Tavern. Sounds fine. The Blood and Vine. As you walk in, um, it's the... <laughs> everybody in there was having conversations, drinking, and then as soon as you guys breach the doors and are standing there, it's almost like comical. Record scratch. Oh, everybody staring and looking at you. Waiting for you to do or say something. How's my um, sense handling the town? Um. Well, it seems like no matter what, your sense is constantly on high alert. Everywhere around you, you get this purveying sense of doom and, and impending evil. And unless there is some creature in your immediate vicinity... It's constantly you, you. You always have this uh, this uh, sense of dread. <laughs> yeah, it just says the type. It, it, it just says type of creature, so it could be anything. Mm -hmm. I just turn around and I say that something isn't quite right here, but we'll see what happens. 
And I'll go in and ask. Yeah, well, we're already inside, right? So. Yeah. Question: Does his sense um, pick up chaotic things, or is it just evil? It's evil. It, it tip well. Uh, I believe it says what like in the book. It says celestial, like celestial demons, undead, undead. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, but because of the unique um, location, it's always location. Be active. Right, right. There's a sense of undead, demonic. No, I know. I was asking for another reason, though. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what though? It does pick up. Uh, uh, you know, whenever you open your senses and use your divine sense, for some reason, Snarl stands out. <laughs> That's because he's got horns, right? I mean, yeah, he is a tiefling. <laughs> you get a you get a, a small notion of uh, infernal blood there. Okay. Anyway, walking into the tavern, um, you see that there's a uh, two tables that have several of the humans sitting at it there's a table at the corner where there's a young gentleman sitting by himself and then there's a bar with a uh, stout looking fellow behind it okay. can I uh, approach the bar and uh, ask how much it is for a room for all of us he looks up at you uh, mindlessly cleaning glasses one after the other and he says, uh, what kind of room do you need? Like, uh, one double and two singles? What? What? <laughs> 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 need a room to sleep in. What kind of room do you think I'm talking about? No need, no okay. need to get rude. I'm just asking a question, sir. It'll cost you three gold. Per head? Or in general? Uh, no, in general. And cleans the room for three gold. What was that, little miss? Nothing. So I'll, 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 pay for the room. I'll put three gold down and pay for the room. Okay. As uh, he scoops your gold up and sticks it in his pocket, you notice that something seems off about the man. His mannerisms are all very slow, very methodical. And every time he speaks, it's in that same flat monotone. He's a robot. <laughs> He's a robot! Um, <laughs> he looks to the three of you now and says, Could I offer you a glass of wine? One copper. No, I'm fine. No, I'm I'm, I'm good, thank you. Uh, Cue the 360 Rocky. degree head turn. I'll take a glass of wine. <laughs> I'm okay. touching it. It's not um, wine. I can only pay him in gold, but I give him one gold piece and tell him the rest is a tip. He looks at it, and he looks at you and stares you in the eye, and he says, "Yay." <laughs> here and it, and instead of giving you a cup he gives you an entire pitcher of wine and he says help yourselves your patronage is always welcome here I think you need to recharge him <laughs> has anyone got an apple charger <laughs> okay um, so pitcher in hand uh, and key to your rooms what would you like to do I'll go find the room I mean, I'll hand everyone their keys, and then I'll um, I'll sit down at a table and drink some wine. Well, I say sit at a table. I mean, I'm like a six on the floor, three hundred and seventy pound <laughs> pound tail. I'll I'll sit near a table, on the floor. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go rest upstairs in the bedroom, in the room. Okay, so it sounds all right. You guys walk upstairs, and you see a hallway full of rooms. And, uh, you know, the keys are labeled one, two, three. And on each of the doors, there's a number etched into it. One, two, three. So you can find what room, what rooms belong to you. Um, upon opening the rooms, you see that they are quite small and they're very utilitarian. There's a bed, there's a dresser, and that's it. 
My god, That's... this room is huge! <laughs> this... Small! Because <laughs> <laughs> um, a cat around in here. So if you guys wanted... You said you were going to take a rest. What about you, uh, Barkley? No. Rat? I think he said he was taking a rest as well. Yeah, he's taking uh, a rest too. Barkley, okay, so both of you guys can take a long rest and uh, regain your spell slots, your sheets. Um... Papa, sitting at a table, um, you, the one gentleman who is sitting by himself, gets up and takes a seat at your table. Yes, sit down. Hello. He um, looks around, you know, and you can see that the the man is quite distressed. Uh, he can't possibly be older than 30, but his hair is almost completely white, and his face looks very haggard. Uh, is there something I can help you with? It's like, shh, 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 shh. Keep your voice down. He has spies everywhere. Who? The Devil Strahd can't even say his name some believe that simply speaking it aloud draws the attention of the rats and the ravens and his other consorts but why did you just say his name shh shh shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I have, a, I have a proposition for you okay stop giggling what's, what's the problem <laughs> You see, I have uh, I have a sister, and the demon has been uh, has been tormenting her for several nights. She stays with the burgomaster, but every day she uh, she awakes to strut outside her window, surrounding the the house with with wolves and zombies. He, he seeks to enslave her and take her, and his voice is rising as he's talking, and he seeks to enslave her and hey, carry her away to his calm castle. Down, and calm down. Shh, 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 shh. Um, is this Irina, by any chance? How do you know her name? I just read the letter. Uh, I, we found a dead person, and I, I picked up this letter, and I showed him the letter with the... He snatches yeah. it from your hands. Well, all right. Oh, this is terrible news. Where did you find this letter? On a dead body, uh, outside of town before we were attacked by wolves. And I believe uh, this devil you are talking about approached us. This is terrible. Terrible. But we I'm should sorry. try and help. I'm sorry that you're here at all, friend, but now that you're here, you should... You know, if you can help, it'd be much appreciated. We, I will try and help, and I will, I will talk my friends into helping as well. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's good news indeed. Here, you'll have to. Uh, I'll meet with you in an hour or so, and I'll give you more details. I have to go talk with Irina, and he gets up and he promptly just runs out of the out of the tavern. Okay. And uh, we'll. Uh... Pour a cup of wine and gingerly taste it. Okay. So you're gonna keep drinking. They're upstairs sleeping. Uh, the Brack. See. Si. Okay. So, uh, walking up to the establishment, you see the sparse light from this building spills out from behind a drawn heavy curtain. A sign over the door, creaking on its hinges, reads, Bill Drath's Mercantile. Oh, perfect. I'm going to go in. Okay. Walking into the store, you see a uh, an older uh, Barovian uh, behind the counter. And you see him look up at you suspiciously. He says... 
It's been a long time since Strahd is Lord of Dwarf here. What? I, I'm sorry, who's this Strahd you're speaking of? <laughs> Strahd, the, uh, the devil that rules this domain. Surely you've met him by now. Uh, I don't think so. Well, admit, it doesn't matter. I'm uh, sure you will soon enough. I'm going to be like, I've only met a house and a bunch of wolves. So. Well, no matter. What can I do for you? Uh, yes, I'm looking for an inn. Uh, you'll have to look across the way. I believe the, uh, the, the blood and uh, vine has some rooms that they rent out from time to time. Perfect. Also, uh, let me look at my character sheet. Because I need to replace... Hey, you wouldn't happen to have any um, holy water, would you? Oh, holy... What? Holy. Here. You, you could, you're more than welcome to look around my shop. And he goes back to tending things behind the register. I'll, I'll look um, around the shop. Looking around the shop? I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the mercantile store. And oh, also, I'm going to hold up the steel mirror and carefully non Not a vampire. Them. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> um, looking around the shop. Uh, I, you see, I just added a new thing to your yeah. journal. It should have popped up. Um, he sells adventuring gear. But this is a small shop, and he only, he will have nothing in stock that's value is over 25 gold. Okay? Yeah. So nothing in stock that's over 25 gold, right? Yep, so alchemist fire, okay. uh, antitoxin, healing potions. Um, I'm, I'm good then. I'll go. Uh, yeah, magnifying glass for some reason. Yeah, I'll go to the group. Uh, give me a sec. My dog needs out, but I'm gonna go to the group at the tavern. Okay. Um, you walk in, and you see an empty tavern. Your friends are nowhere to be seen. Okay. And <laughs> and you see a couple uh, tables with people sitting at them, and a. Uh, and a portly uh, bartender. Okay, then I'll just sit and wait, figuring my friends will be along at some point. Okay. As uh, you're sitting there, the bartender calls out to you. Are you with those other guys that were here? Yes, yes I am. I can tell. You're just as strange as they are. Cool. You have rooms one through three down the hall. And okay, points. thank you. And I'll just sit here and wait. Because <laughs> I don't feel like going into their rooms. So. Okay. So, everybody, go ahead and take a long rest. And uh, when you wake up in the morning... Morning... I'll wake up and go, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in the what? bedroom with you? What's Damn the matter, Hapa? Damn <laughs> wine, I forgot about the bloke I was meant to be meeting an hour ago. <laughs> I'll, I'll get up and uh, I'll go downstairs and, and sit at the same table and, and hope I haven't missed anybody. Um, You do not see him. However, you do see three people um, who look remarkably different from everybody else you've seen so far. So far, um, the all of the Barovians you've seen have been very kind of dour and drab. They dress in blacks and browns. Um, oh god, I see death saving throws. Oh, that's already... They just recovered. They just took a long rest, so it's all we good. We did? Okay, cool. Yeah. Does that mean um, full health? Yes, everybody should be full health, spells recovered. 
Um, and if you haven't already, I mean, I believe everybody has all their hit dice because of when we ended Death House. Yeah. Anyway, um, these three people, instead, their clothes are very much different. They are um, brightly colored and they're ornamented with a lot of jewelry. And the three of them approach you. They bow very deeply when they uh, get within arm's reach. And they say, the Vistani have welcomed you to Barovia. The what? We are the Vistani. We are a group of people who are, uh, how you say in common, um, we are outsiders. We are uh, not native here like uh, like the rest. And she motions to... Yeah. Question, am I down there with them still? Yep, the whole party went. Well, cool. silver, <laughs> silver mirror the second they start talking. Not vampires. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever was a vampire. Well, they only sound like a, your, your average vampire. They're not actually vampires. <laughs> Um, what do you mean by outsiders? We've not, I've not seen you in, in the hours that I've been here. I've only seen people dressed quite horribly, and you guys are very colorful <gasps> compared. That is because we Vestani, we uh, make camp outside of town. What have you seen outside of town to bring you inside to, to speak with me? Well, us. I, ass I can assume if this is daytime, they are not vampires. It's a good thought, Ryder Link. That is a good thought. Maybe they might <laughs> be vampires. They are yeah, also maybe indoors. Maybe they're the vampires so, that mm -hmm. sparkle in the sunlight. No, nope, no, not, not in this. All. Nope. <laughs> um, Damn Twilight. <laughs> they say that uh, we Vistani, we we roam and we trade. We come into Barovia to uh, exchange goods with the mercantile and. And we actually own this establishment. Your rooms are very big. Quite like it. Hmm. It was cozy. They, uh, I could barely fit, but that's okay. <laughs> the 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 one in the lead bows low again, and she says, "You humble us with your kind words." Just, Give uh, you five um, stars on TripAdvisor. Can you what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at dot dot dot. Stuff? Yeah, I'm gonna look at the group and be like, I think I found a place where we can stock up on some goods. If you guys wanna come and nod to the door, like, we should probably leave. <laughs> <laughs> Probably leave. <laughs> she says, yeah. uh, the, the, the leader again, Oh, by all means, go. We don't want to uh, hold you up. We just uh, want to say hello. And you uh, should stop by camp. We have goods to sell. And uh, you should see Madame Eva for a uh, fortune telling. She, oh, uh, I'm, 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 my, my somewhat fake hidden ears perk up at um, fortune telling. <laughs> And um, I will also ask if they know the location of the Bogman, whatever he was called. Uh, the what Burgomaster. Burgomaster. Um, because we have he, uh, business there. He uh, lives on the eastern side of town, I believe. But we don't deal with him often. Is there a reason why you don't deal with him? Eh, we have no need. Okay. Uh, well, good day, and I'll uh, pop my head in and out of my shell as a bow, as my tail. All I can actually bow, and I will leave. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, do, you don't have like a, a midsection, right? It's just a shell, so you just kind of <laughs> at the waist. <laughs> yeah, like a proper turtle. I just can't bow at all, so I just in and out of my shell and leave. <laughs> That's horrifying. Yeah, I'm gonna go check out that place that I didn't check out. <laughs> I just wave and leave. Bye. Wait, what place that you didn't check out? The one next to the in market thing. Okay. 
the smaller of the three huts. I love you, Daddy Warbucks. Just popped in waiting on the woman. Have a good one. Hey, Uber Douche, thank you for the resub, buddy. What is that? Four, four months already. Damn, man, time flies. Thank you. Wow. You know I love you. All right. That's um, months. Woo. Um, woo! I'll, woo. I'll uh, uh, follow um, the Brock. Okay, gonna, so everybody's going to go with the Brock? Yeah, as we pass the mercantile, I'm going to be like, guys, in there, um, there's a bunch of really cool stuff, I guess. I mean, it's a mercantile. You can stock up on gear and stuff. I'm going to check did, this place out. Did he have any potions or anything that we could use? Uh, did I see any potions? I think you said yes. No. Um, Maybe so. No. No, well, he didn't um, have any potions. But that's a Where shame. The heck did um, the thing go? But he, he might have a healer's kit. Interesting. Okay. Well, what we've got currently will have to suffice, and we could also travel outside of town to see the Visani. That is um, very true. We also, uh, we were approached by the brother of the Coilin lady the other day, uh, last night, as I was sat waiting for you to arrive in the inn. Mm -hmm. And he uh, told us to go see the um, Virgo Master again. So we should probably do that at some point today. Okay. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Um, I'm going to go in and check this place out. I don't think you guys would probably be a good addition coming in with me, just because we don't want to scare too many people, you know? Uh, standing the there. Bep, 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 bep. Standing there in front of the house as you're having this conversation. You hear a moaning sob floating through. Ryder Link, thank you for the follow. Uh, you hear uh, that's what she said. You know that's what, oh, that's hello. what you hear. The, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, you hear <laughs> Ryder Link, thank you for the follow. Uh, <laughs> Crazy uh, lady lives there. <laughs> a moaning cats. sob floats through the still gray street, coloring your thoughts with sadness. The sounds flow from the dark two-story townhouse standing behind you. Um, I do not think you should go alone. I'm gonna go alone. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm, gonna go open... I'm gonna go open the door though. Uh, and pop my head in and be like, "Hello." All right. Um. Well, you don't go in. Because trying to open the door, you find that it is locked and doesn't oh. budge. But the <laughs> crying continues. Oh! Can oh! I Ayana, can you go try and pick this lock? Yeah, I'm going to pick... Can I try pick the lock? No. Absolutely. And as you approach the lock, I'll stand behind you, uh, covering you with my giant shell. Shell? I forgot what I clicked for pick lock pick. Uh, thieves tools. Okay, um, you you stick your lockpick inside the lock. You deftly turn it until you hear a click, and the, the lock is open. And I'm gonna. But step turning back. the knob and pushing oh, on the door, it still doesn't budge. It feels like there's something heavy on the other side. Uh, the door's unlocked, this. but I can't get in. Can I go try and push it? Uh huh. I'm gonna step out the way and let Happer first. Wait, who's pushing it? Happer. Oh, can I jump on his back and try to help? <laughs> How are you going to help him push it standing on his back? You can fall off him the by pushing against the door. It's just mm -hmm. is it is it just a straight uh, strength check? Uh yeah. Or I you mean, can I use can your just... athletics proficiency. Uh, uh so you have you... strength now, but never. Yeah, well, eight is a fail. <laughs> Ten is a fail, yeah. even if you were using uh, athletics. Oh my! My athletics is plus four. Can I yeah, sure, why not? Kick it. My strength, strength check. Uh huh. Did you click it? Oh, there it is. Yeah. 16. So uh, Barkley walks up and he just puts both hands in front of him and pushes on the door with all of his might. And surprisingly, the door gives. Yeah, yeah, and uh, when you push the door open, <laughs> you see that uh, there was a dresser propped on the other side, and 
pushing the door open, knocks the dresser over onto the ground, and it crashes and makes a ton of noise. And you see a woman sitting Indian style in the center of the room, and all of the noise and commotion doesn't even register. She continues to sit and sob. At least we didn't squish her. No, it's, it's, uh, uh, I'll tap Barkley on the shoulder and ask if he wants me to go first. Yeah, let's go first. And I'll, I'll enter and I'll approach the woman gingerly. I mean, I, I could probably go first. I'm gonna go to the want. merchants. Boop. I'm, I'm, I'll go, I'll go first. <laughs> now. Okay. Left everyone. And I'll speak. Um, <laughs> hello? Are you okay? I'm... My daughter... Like, my daughter is gone! Um... Would you like us to look for her? Could you? And she looks up at you with teary and hopeful eyes. Yes. Is her name uh, Irina? No. My, my daughter is Gertruda. Oh, I've hid okay. her here in, in this house her entire life, and she's a teenager now, but she broke out last week. All I've done is try to protect her from the horrors of Barovia, but she uh, uh, values her freedom, I suppose. She is a teenager. I'll leave the building. Hey, wait! Here! <laughs> um, she, she holds yeah. something out to you. I'll... I'll... I'll take it. It's a uh, malformed doll. It has a strange leer and wears a set cloth dress. She tells you that uh, to give this to Gertruda if if you find her, and she'll know that it's from her. Right, is there any ideas? Any ideas as to where you think she would have gone? None at all. None. Okay. None at all. You have to find her, and she resumes her loud crying. Okay, we'll try and find her now. Yeah. Um, Debrock's already building. gone with the halfling. <laughs> Debrock's oh. like, oh, this is just some bitch giving up a quest. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, looking at the uh, at the doll, you see that sewn into the dress are the words, is no fun, is no blinksy. Put the doll down, it's creepy. <laughs> You say Blinksy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a doll. Good luck with any doll. Creepy flipping thing. Oh, I carried the last doll. What are you talking about? Everton Darland? Thank you for the following. Welcome. How are you? And I'll, uh, I assume it's just me and Barkley standing in the street now. And I'll ask him where the other two went. Um, You can see... You know, them through a window in the building right next to you. I wave outside the window. Hello! Well, you can't see a window, you're too small. I jump up and down. And wave out the window as I jump. <laughs> uh, with those two being in the mercantile shop, is there any way I could probably go look for the um, Orgmeister's house? And I'll... Standing where you are, you see down the road a collection of more dour drab buildings. But then you see one that is particularly large at the end of the road. I'll, um, assuming that these two have no money for the fact that I had to pay for the room, I'll, I'll oh, bang I the window and, that... I'll, and I'll point down to the I'm end gonna, of the room. I'm going to pull out the, uh, the spell book and hold it up and be like, and keep pointing at it, you know? Like, I have something that's probably worth money. And I will wait then. I don't think I've picked up anything that I could sell. So. I'm going to talk to the merchant guy and I'm asking if he's got a poisoner's kit. Uh, I don't know why. Like, for some reason it didn't appear in your journal. What, didn't the spell book? No, the the uh... the adventuring gear. Uh, gear. Oh, it's at yeah. the bottom. It's, it's at the bottom. the bottom. Supplemental material. Why is it there? All right, I'm gonna move it up to the top. Ah. Um, because I I couldn't find it. As far as uh, you said, a poisoner's kit. 
Oh, any poison in general. No, this I don't think that's something that would be in a uh, just a random shop. Can I walk out? It's, it's also worth fifty gold, so it's not gonna uh, be there. Yeah. I'm twenty they, gold shot. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't sell anything of value more than twenty five gold. Alright, okay, I'll leave the shop. Uh, is there a bard? Go, there is no the bard. Hopper. Our our party consists of a actually there's two rogues. One of them is absent today. A paladin. A, a yeah, he's a swashbuckler. Um, we have a paladin, a druid, and a sorcerer. I'm gonna go to Happer. So, what did the crazy lady say? We have a. Um... A daughter to find, and I'll show you the uh, the doll, and I'll point out the inscription that's been sewn into it. Is no fun. Is no blinksy. I push the doll away and go. Do we know what the daughter looks like? Nope. Did you ask? Nope. We'll be fine. Okay. She's a teenager, right? Uh, I'm gonna look at the. I'm gonna. Look, many teenagers. Well, I'm gonna walk up to the store owner and hold up the uh, spell book and be like, "Hey, do you buy these?" I mean, he looks at it yeah. and he kind of pulls his glasses down and squints real hard. He's like, "What's that now?" Uh, it's a uh, spell book. It has spells in it. They're worth quite a bit of money. To who? <laughs> what? To who? Who? Who would I sell this to? Any spell caster person? He. Still has his glasses down around his nose, and he looks at you, and he says, "How many of those do you think we get here?" A lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Ah, <laughs> uh, Chowens, thank you for the follow, and welcome to the channel. How are you today? Sorry, I missed the notification, so I had to wait for it to come up in chat. <laughs> He's like, no, sir, I'm sorry. I have no use for that. Maybe if you show it to the uh, Vistani, uh, they might uh, have a use for it. Cool, they might have some better items, too. Okay, thank you, and I'm going to walk out. Wow, rude. Rude. <laughs> Dio. I'm going to carry him down to the big house at the bottom of the street. Shade. So, walking uh, down the road, you see a uh, weary-looking mansion squats behind a rusted iron gate. Ow! Walking on me. The iron gates are twisted and torn. The right gate lies cast aside, while the left swings lazily in the wind. The stuttering squeal and clang of the gate repeats with mindless precision. Weeds choke the grounds and press with menace upon the house itself. Yet... Against the walls, the growth has been tramped down to create a path all around the domain. Heavy claw markings have stripped the once beautiful finish of the walls. Great black marks tell of fires that have assailed the mansion. Not a pane or shard of glass stands in any window. All the windows are barred with planks, each one marked with stains of evil omen. Well, this feels nice, and I'll knock on the door. Answering the door... Answering the door... Sorry, I'm Tell me to read answer the door. <laughs> answering the door! There we go. A woman opens it. And the woman is clad in armor, um, belayed with brilliant uh, scarlet, you know, um, markings. I'm going to hold up a mirror. I'm going to hold up the mirror. <laughs> Not a vampire. <laughs> okay. Just check it, man. <laughs> Doing my due diligence. <laughs> Did you check that plant? It could be a vampire. Oh, yeah. I'm going to hold up my uh, mirror to the plant. Plants are not vampiric, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it could be. Uh, hello. 
Um, are you Irene? No? She puts her hand on the hilt of a weapon. Says, who are you? Why do you want to know? My name is Happer. Uh, we found a letter um, from someone called Cloyan a while, uh, not too long, yesterday. And we've um, been sent to try and save your life or been afflicted or been told or it said that you've been afflicted by some evil. Yes. But she kind of peeks out the door and looks past you. She says, here, enter. And stands aside so that you can enter the mansion. I'm gonna peek my head inside and scan around the room with the mirror. I'm not. I'm going in. He's <laughs> <laughs> going in. The interior of the mansion is well furnished, yet the fixtures show signs of great wear. Noticeable oddities are the boarded-up windows and the presence of holy symbols in every room. The burgomaster is in a side drawing room on the floor lying in a simple wooden coffin surrounded by wilting flowers and a faint odor of decay. Um, inside the room is Ismark, the man you met in the, uh, in, in the tavern. Say hello again, and I'm sorry that I slept through a meeting. He puts his hand up in the air weakly in a little hello. Uh, as soon as everybody enters... She immediately slams the door closed and begins locking and bolting the door. I will turn around and ask why in Helm's name he hasn't been buried yet and point to the body. She looks over to the Burgomaster and she explains that uh, the car- that the house has been assaulted by wolves and other terrible creatures every night for weeks. The Burgomaster's heart couldn't stand the constant assault and he died three days ago. Unfortunately, Irina uh, is too afraid to leave the house. Otherwise, she would have given him a proper burial. Okay. Um... She also says that uh, Bismarck was looking for someone from the village to assist to take him to the cemetery. But no one, none of the Barovian villagers will assist her or Ismark because they're afraid of incurring Strahd's wrath. What, what have you done to uh, piss off Strahd so badly? Upon hearing your question, she begins to laugh, but it's not, it's not a, uh, a laugh of amusement. It's a very bitter. And she says, I have done nothing. The monster believes me to be, uh, to be his long lost love returned to him and he'll stop at nothing to have me Johan thank you for the follow well I will gladly help his mark take the body and bury it in the cemetery but if this is the case and you have been assaulted for days on end we, I don't think you should be leaving the building that's your wisdom is sound sir I will stay here. They have yet to breach uh, the house. So I'll be relatively safe. Yeah, but if you guys could take the Burgomeister and give him a proper burial, then we could start the next uh, the next part of our plan. To the cemetery! I mean, we also need to stop by the Vish... whatever people are outside. Visanti. Yeah, that. Uh, I, I will say, before we... Uh... We help with the burial. We will go talk with the Vistani and see what is happening over there at their camp. Is that okay? No, that's that's ludicrous. The Vistani camp is many miles away. It'll be days before you return. I think we should bury the body first. I saw the Vistani this morning. They told me it was just outside of town. Just outside of town, meaning set like miles away. It's a several days trip by foot. The Vistani have uh, horses and other other beasts to carry them, so they can make the trip much faster. And I'll, uh, that's Dev Bracken will be like, well, looks like we're burying the body. God damn it. Can't we, <laughs> <laughs> can't we just burn it? She, like she turns this. and scowls at you. No! The Burgomeister was a good, God-fearing man, and he deserves a proper burial. 
I mean, yeah. That that could be considered a proper burial in some circles. No. Uh, Fine. It will will, <laughs> es will escort Esma to a. Does anybody want to stay here with Irina, or should we all go? I'll stay with her. Are you gonna split the party? Don't do it. I mean, no. <laughs> I don't want to now. <laughs> I'll, I'll come with you. <laughs> okay. It's like everybody's made their mind up. Looks like we're all going. <laughs> I mean, she's a rogue. And Hi, she can hide. But that's not. I mean, I could stay with. Uh, uh, what's her face? Irina. I, th I, I yeah. think. I can stay with her. We'll go. We'll all go. Let's just go. All right, so is Mark uh, joins you, and I don't think I did this the first time. I love the door. Never split up. This is not Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> so is Mark approaches you now, and he says, "Here, I uh, give me a moment. I'll fashion some handles on the coffin so that we can carry him to to the cemetery." I mean, why? We have a turtle right there that we could just have carry him. <laughs> just pop him on his shell. He looks at you, eyebrow raised. Do you think you could lift him? Uh, I uh -oh. could try. Make sure the lid's on first. Jesus. I mean, just lift the body. We can bury him when we get there. I'm placed in this coffin for a reason. Still gross and rotty. Alright, so roll a strength check, yeah? Sure. Athletic. Well, no, no, no. Um, what is your your strength? It's, uh, Fifteen. Okay. No, you can carry it. Your your <laughs> lift your lift drag pull is enough. You can hoist the coffin up onto your shell and. <laughs> yeah. See, see, this is where it gets complicated with a top. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll carry him <laughs> with Ismark and the rest. You of the you like fireman carry it across your your shoulders. And so you have yeah. both your hands on it. <laughs> All right. Um, Ismark says to you that the uh, carrying the body with nothing protecting you or it is a wonderful idea. It's in it's a coffin. Fine. It's in it's in a makeshift wooden coffin. It's, it's in a coffin, and I'm in a shell. I'm fine. Let's go. Um, Ismark. And if he panics, you can go inside it. Says here. It, we have to go to the north end of the city. It's where the cemetery is. This is going to be fun. And he yeah. is going to lead the way. He ran. I catch him up. I just moved. Because walking, th walking <laughs> through the city, um, there's going to be nothing of note. The Barovians, already afraid of the outsiders, um, the strangers, now that you are carrying the corpse of the Burgomeister... Um, they are, they are openly afraid and terrified, and yeah, they afraid. run into their houses and close the door. Some of them uh, begin to pray at the sight of you, and walking past, you can hear them. They're all praying that the the wrath of Strahd isn't brought upon the village because of your actions. Is it bad if I just openly say I'm glad the wrath of Strahd might come at us? <laughs> uh, you might you might not make some friends. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> He's not with us. <laughs> Atop a slight rise against the roofs I'm sorry, against the roots of the pillar stone that supports uh Castle Ravenloft stands a grey sagging edifice of stone and wood. Uh the church is obviously Please weathered kitten? Thank you for the follow. I like your name. That's there's funny. a webbed kitten. kitten? Uh, yeah, there's a kitten. And ah, kitty! <laughs> <laughs> the church has obviously weathered the assaults of evil for centuries on end and is worn and weary. A bell tower rises toward the back and flickering light shines through the holes in the shingled roof. The rafters strain feebly against the load. As you approach, the heavy wooden doors of the church are covered with claw marks and scarred by fire. We're gonna go in. 
Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, well, I need to wait for one of you guys to open it since I'm carrying I, a coffin. Oh, I'll pop my head in and scan the room with <coughs> my mirror. Any vampires? Um, Any vampires? No, none that you can see. Okay. The room is empty. Then you check like, this. Is my good. guy being a vampire? Yeah, I already checked him. Ah, okay. <laughs> Just be safe. <laughs> is this kid um, a vampire? Yeah, I said yes. that when I was The kitten to... is a vampire. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and kick the kitten away. <laughs> Ooh, Ryder Link just cheered 200 uh, For the bits. party's ideas. All right. Um, Ryder, I know you're relatively new to our stream, but underneath the uh, stream, there is actually a list of ways that you can interact with our D&D games, and 200 bits will put you in the first tier. You can bless or curse one of our uh, players with advantage or disadvantage if you so choose. So go ahead and take a look at that panel and uh, tell me if you're interested. Uh, you right. could also heal someone. Could you nah, heal the, uh, you're could all you full health right now. Body? You're all, well, that's not going to do anything. Well, could he heal the, uh, the border master? No, he's been dead for three days. And Aww. there's a difference between healing and resurrecting somebody. Can we, okay. can we go in the church? Wait, this coffin's exactly. getting heavy. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. Who's, who's, who's the, who's the bald-headed white guy? Entering the church, you see the doors open and reveal a 10-foot wide, 20-foot long hall leading to a brightly lit chapel. The hall is unlit and reeks of mildew. Four doors, two on each side of the hall, lead to adjacent chambers. You can see that the chapel is strewn with debris, and you hear a soft voice from within reciting a prayer. Suddenly, the prayer is blotted out by an inhuman scream that rises up from beneath the wooden floor. Beef Eater! <laughs> Welcome to the stream and thank you for the follow. That's a weird scream from the floor. Yeah, beef Eater! Beef Eater! <laughs> what? There's something terrible going on here, guys. Um, sure he is he from sure London? He that hat. From London. Military thing. Okay, uh, so there's a <laughs> scream from the floor. Yes, but before we continue, you have entered the church, <laughs> and I have a map for that. Yeah. A map. New map. Wait, there's a map. There's a map. There's a map. I'm the map. map. There's a map. Oh God, what did I do? Oh my God, this door is far as you. Get out quick. <laughs> <laughs> so standing here, I think I am on the wrong. I am on the wrong. Layer. Token layer. There we go. So there's Hopper and Iona. Not Azoth. He's not here. Debrack. Barkley. I give the pineapple inspiration and the turtle. Absolutely. All right. Oh, thank you. So Hoppa and... Uh, Iona, you can both add inspiration to your character sheets. There's a map for that. Hey, Dimitri, how you doing? So walking in, uh, I've already described to you what you see in area A. But you can also see, where the heck did my, there it is. Um, you can also see that there are four doors. And it opens up into a, a wide area here. Well, with the um, yeah. coffin on my back, can I place it down at the double doors? Sure. I'm going to because... look at Barkley and be like, hey, check that door next to you. I'm going to check this. Just make sure we don't get, you know, fucked in the ass when we... I don't have a mirror, though. Get the mirror. Oh, he's got I mean, back. Well, no, it's just so that we don't get um, blindsided but from behind when we go further in, just in case, you know. Okay. I'll go check the door. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to check the one next to me as well. So you're going to open... The two doors at the bottom here, this one and this one, correct? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, to Brock first, if you could open your door and walk in, please. What you see is a uh, this dirty, lightless room contains a wooden bed and a straw-filled mattress. Mounted above the bed's uh, headboard is a wooden holy symbol. I'm a player, and d and I don't like seeing my players or fellow players having saving throws. <laughs> oh, a DM. and Okay. Right on. So, that's all that you see, DeBrock. Uh, any actions? No. Uh, no. Nope. Okay. Uh, and then Snall, if you could walk Barkley. into your room. Barkley! Damn it. Um... In this room, time and neglect have punched holes in the ceiling of this moldy room, which contains a few broken roof shingles amid puddles of water. In one corner, set into the floor, is a heavy wooden trap door held shut with a chain and a padlock. A young man's screams of anguish can be heard coming through the door. Can I go outside and tell Leona to come in and check it? Uh huh. I'm gonna go back out with the group. Okay, so I'll tell Leona that there's a trap door and she might need to check it. Alright, I'm coming in. It seems like the sound is coming from there. Wait! I'm in the room! You, <laughs> you hear someone behind you yell out. Mirror. Who's that? Hello? <laughs> I use the mirror on him. <laughs> He's on holy ground. Uh, I mean, the man look, standing in front of you is a priest. And he <laughs> holds his hands up and he says, Stop, wait. I am uh, I am Father Donovich. Why are you here? Well, Father, for... we came to bury the Burgomaster, but there's screams coming from the floor for some reason. I, I... What's in these four rooms? Those are those are bedrooms, and that, and he points to the left, is my office. What's in this far end room with the trap door? That is my son. What's wrong with your son? Why is he... yeah, screaming? A little more than a year ago, my son, he was 20... Him and some other villagers stormed Castle Ravenloft in a revolt, having been lured there by a wizard in black robes who came to Barovia. So, as all that I know, everyone who went to Ravenloft died that day. But uh, to punish me, Strahd turned my son into some unholy, and he kind of looks away, struggling to find the words, and then he finally spits out, Thing. Zombie? I've locked him under there to, uh, hopefully, I have been praying for an entire year trying to get to God to restore my son, but he has not listened. I think. I mean, we could restore him with death, but. No, you shall not harm my boy. Well, we'll just leave the, we'll leave the son and we'll do what we yeah. came here for. Underneath the, uh, from the uh, room down below, you hear the screaming again. Father, I am hungry. I must eat. I'll, uh, I'll approach the the priest and I'll say, with all all compassion that Helm has granted me, I, I believe that we need to end this unholy thing in your, in the flow. Whether it was your son, not it is not anymore. Donovich uh, collapses in front of you. He falls to his knees and uh, he says, I know. I, I know you are right. But it, I cannot help here. And he holds up a small silver key. Thank Please you. be make it merciful. We will. I'm going to pull out two of the three stakes that are in my uh, Monster Hunters pack and hand one to the turtle. 
got his arms full of the coffin still. Uh, and then I'll down. just hand him to... No, oh, put, he did? I'll put the okay. coffin down. I'm oh, gonna okay. hand it to the turtle then, and hand the other one to the rogue. Thank you all. Um, before we go through the trapdoor, is it possible for me to channel divinity and create and use it to create sacred weapon on my hammer? What do you mean? Like to have it ready? Or to just yeah. have... To have it ready. Because um, it says here it's an action for a minute, so I'm not sure what I can do, what we should do, what I can do with it. No, okay, yeah, you can do it outside of combat. Yep. And then all of your attacks will do, uh, what, D... Plus I can't even remember. Uh, it's plus my charisma modifier. Humpa. Channel so of Energy Sacred plus Weapon. Three. And view it with positive energy for one minute. Attack rolls made the weapon. Also emits bright light at 20 foot radius. Uh, okay. So you can, you can definitely cast that now. Right? And then climb downstairs. However, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to metagame a little bit. What guarantee do you have that... It's not going to take more than one minute to climb yeah, that's, down. that's that's what I was thinking. I mean, I <laughs> would swear off and it'd be like, and swing. No, you do nothing. Yeah, it actually, as you raise your weapon to smite the vampire, you see that the light disappears from your weapon and now you're boned. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Okay, so I won't, I won't no, do that. Let's not do that. There, there was no metagaming happening whatsoever. <laughs> the VOD has, has already been deleted and no one can prove anything. Wait, so Hoppa's not the holy fighter person? Oh, he is. He's a paladin. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. He just has I was like, other, why aren't other means. You use the stake. <laughs> because yeah, I could wood. turn my hammer into a plus three holy weapon. That is true. Okay, so heading downstairs? Yeah. Alrighty. I'm gonna look at the priest and be like, "When we get back, we need to talk about getting some. Uh, I need a refill on my holy water." I am going to move I'm, your I'm characters. I'm sure the priest will happily bless your weapon if we can um, make this quiet and merciful for his, for what was his son. And me. Damn it! I lost it. We are all... What's his, what's his name is supposed to be? Oh no! I tapped off of the page! <laughs> <laughs> a lovely name. Uh, who was it? Was it Snall? Saying he has a... Uh, like, my mouse wheel, I could flick it, and then it'll go back a page or go forward a page. Yeah. And I was scrolling through my list, and I accidentally clicked it, and now I'm no longer on the page. No, that sucks. I can do the that with mine, except it closes the page. <laughs> huh. Ooh. What was his name? Isma? Isma. Isma. Ismark. There we go. Alright, he is staying upstairs with the coffin. Oh, Lexi! Thank you for the follow and welcome. How is everyone? Alright, so you guys. And I'm 1982204. That's with the follow train. Alright, so you guys didn't establish a marching order. I'm going to establish one for you. Um, the total uh, trunk. Hap is always fun. There we go. There you go. So walking down the stairs into the uh, basement area in the Undercroft. The church's Undercroft has rough-hewn walls and a floor made of damp clay and earth. Rotting wooden pillars strain under the weight of the wooden ceiling, and candlelight from the chapel above slips through the cracks, allowing you a glimpse of a gaunt shape in a far corner. All along the walls of this stone undercroft, you can see claw marks and bloody handprints where this creature has unsuccessfully tried to escape over the course of the past year. I'm going to hold up my mirror. It is definitely a vampire! Yes! <laughs> you did it he got one! You found one! <laughs> The, as soon as you hold the mirror up to the up to the creature in the corner, he uh, turns and hisses at you. Why are you here? We're here to do what your father couldn't. Uh, sadly, you need to be purged. 
Yeah. Perhaps you dare, you will be but a tender morsel in my belly. And it, it rushes at you with ravenous hunger. And that'll be an issue curve. Get in your shell quickly. Ah, oh, boo. <laughs> <laughs> no, not me. Thank you. <laughs> Curse you, Rogue. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't have the assassin thing, do you? What Sucks. assassin thing? Did you? What did you pick? I'm she assassin. chose assassin. Oh, you did? Yeah, Sweet. I'm assassin then you, a, then you get the fun stuff. I, I don't know what it does. I'm still fighting on it. Oh, uh, did you not add it to your sheet? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know where it is. Uh, it well, is. hold on. I'll, uh, here's what we're going to do, okay? Assassin 5E. Yeah, um, I'm going to pull it up. Nope, that's a monster. That's not you. Or is it? <laughs> Uh, Rogue D&D Wiki, there we go. So, your thing that you get at the first... It's okay, I'm just gonna link it to her. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you can reference it there, and then at the end of today's session, I'll make sure to, uh, we can update your sheet with your assassin, um, right, okay. abilities, okay? Yep. But I believe, yeah, it's down, probably way through the page, it says assassin. You it. gain bonus proficiency with, uh, disguise and poisoner's kit. Alexandries, thank you for the follow you gain assassinate, so um, you have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn yet, which means this is my turn first. Critical. Uh, yeah, uh, no, it's only a critical if the creature is surprised. He is not surprised. Oh yeah, that's right. He can see me. <laughs> but because you have advantage, you will be able to use your sneak attack damage dice because of uh, because you have advantage. Right, okay. right, so Iona, you have the first action. Yay! I'm gonna short bow him. This is really far Okey away. Doke. Or did he move? No, he hasn't moved. He's still right, okay. He's still there in the corner, and he's only 45 feet away. So you can definitely hit him with your short bow. Yeah. Okay, nine. No, oh, eight is a miss. Oh. Screw you, guy in the corner. And I'm going to end my turn, because I can't do anything else. Womp womp. Uh, Hoppa. So, how far away did you say it was? 45 feet? 45. Yeah, 45 feet, I believe. Alright, so I'll move to within 15 of it. Five, I'll ten. use all my movement. Which will be about up to here. Yeah. I think that's about right. Around here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll um, end my turn there. To Brock? Uh, I'll true strike him. Extend your hand, point a finger into target and range. Your magic grants you a brief insight in target's defenses. On your next turn, you gain advantage on your first attack roll against a target, provided the spell hasn't ended. Okay, so you will have advantage on your next attack, Correct. and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what the heck is it? Do nothing, apparently, because I can't edit the NPC sheet. Oh wait, there it is. trying to give you uh, information here and it's not cooperating. Interesting. A cunning action. Don't I get two okay. goes with a um, weapon? Uh, no. Your cunning That's action good. is only... Cunning action uh, is a dash. Oh, all right, okay. Thing. Yeah, so that, it's a... Uh, Dodge, disengage, or dash. Right, okay. Dip, dodge, dash. Okay, so, uh, are you finished, Debrock? Uh, I'm gonna move and then end my turn. Alright, Snow? I'll stay Black here and uh, dodge. I have I stuck him on the again. stairs. <laughs> Yours. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so now Doru is going to take his turn. And he is going to crawl on his hands and feet. Um, almost like an animal or a spider. And he is going to run up for, uh, here to Debrock. And he is going to first swipe at you with his claws. Oops. The first yeah. one. I accidentally hit it twice. Um, he hits you for 8 damage. And he's not going to grapple you because then he's going to lunge at you and try to bite. And he succeeds. He hits you for... Uh, yep. For 16. Ouch. Yeah. And and your you. hit point maximum is reduced by ten. Jesus. Okay. Yep. Your hit point maximum is reduced by the amount of necrotic damage taken, and it will last until you finish a long rest. Oh God. All right, Iona. It is your turn again. I'm gonna move a bit so everyone else can get down the stairs. <laughs> I'm gonna short bow. Pew. Okay, uh, roll 4d6 for sneak yeah. attack because of the critical. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Pressed the wrong button. Oh. 19. Holy crap. Alright, so 23, 30? 30 damage. Yeah. Yeah, well, not really, <laughs> but... Okay, any further actions, Iona? No, that's it. I'm going to move a bit more and go around here. And that's my end turn. Alright, Hopper? Uh, I was going to... I forgot I was not on push talk, and I said they were going to approach him and swing him with the Warhammer. Okay. Uh, ten is a miss. Any further actions? Um, no. I was going to do some uh, lay on hands, but it's an action, not a bonus action. Okay. Uh, Debrock? Uh, I'm gonna say use magic and then cast Shocking Grasp. <laughs> okay, and remember you have advantage on this attack because of your true strike. 22 for <laughs> a whopping 3 damage. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. I'm gonna have to take a long rest after this, anyways. So I'm gonna sorcery points to quicken a spell and cast Scorching Ray. Okay. Eighteen is a hit for another seven. Oh, uh, there we go. Seventeen, twenty-one, twenty-four. Damn! And then I'm going to end my turn. Alright. Uh, Barkley? I had to stop and think. <laughs> I would like to try to use hold person on, on the uh, vampire guy. Okay, if you could uh, if you could go ahead and link it in the chat. Thank you. All right, concentration up to one minute. Humanoid wisdom saving throw or be paralyzed. What's your uh, spell save? Thirteen. Passed. Damn. I'll move down the stairs and stop. And in my turn. All right, Doru is going to take his turn.
Any attacks made on Debrack will be with disadvantage. Any attacks made on Debrack? Yeah. Ooh. That wasn't what I want to do. There we go. Okay. So he will attack uh, Debrack. So first with the claw. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so there's the D100. 15. What is a 15? I don't think we've ever had a 15. In your before. face. He damages himself and incapacitates for one round. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so the, he swings wide with his claws. Um, Debrock is, is small and you, you impose disadvantage on him with your uh, by bashing him with the shield so his attack goes wise and his fingers and nails rake against the stone ground you can you can see his uh, fingernails peel back and a spurt of blood streaks across the concrete um, he holds his hand and shrieks in pain alright Iona it is your turn First of all, I'm going to say, are you okay, husband? <laughs> He's got to figure just... out hands. This, this... <laughs> you kind of grossed him out a little bit. I can hear him in the other room. <laughs> right, I'm going to move. You talk about grossing him out. I'm just, you know, for anybody who's who's unaware, um, Iona and Hoppa are, you know, husband and wife. And <laughs> their characters seem to have this weird romance. Except she is a halfling, and he and a is a turtle. six foot tall turtle, and I can't like, help but him. think about the mechanics of how this works. That was a horrifying relationship. Uh huh. I'm gonna shot by the uh, vampire. All right, that is a hit. Go ahead and roll sneak attack. All right. There we go. Eleven. So, nineteen. Okay. Uh, is that all, Yona? Yes, it is. Alright, Hoppa? Is he back? He's still there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, um... I'm gonna... Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have two attacks, do I? No. So I'm gonna... No. This is how I'm going to swing it in with the Warhammer. Oh my lord. Nope. Uh, attack goes wide and misses. I don't think I have any bonus actions yet. So Actually, actually. Uh, nope, it doesn't matter. You have an advantage on the attack because uh, he's incapacitated, but you still miss. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. That was my turn. Alright, uh, Debrack? I'm back. Just in time. It's your turn. So I'm not dead. Cool. Um, nope. I'm not your dead. Uh, the, the vampire <laughs> fumbled and he messed up his hand. Cool. I'm okay. going to... What can I do? Let me see. Smooth. Can I true strike again? Is that a thing? Uh, true strike is a... Yeah, it's an action. Can't... Okay. Yeah. Uh, in that case, I'll just magic missile. Okay. Three. Two more. Five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Anything else? Uh, again, I'm gonna say use magic and the stakes. Use what? Magic. Mh. Yeah, magic and the stakes. I almost said mh. How you just cast a spell? 
Oh wait, I can't say that. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're you're. Are you saying that? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And then it will be Barclay's turn. I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'll produce flame and throw it. Uh, attack with advantage. He's still incapacitated, so 18 is a hit for one. It's not a lot, but it did something! Poked him in the eye. Alright. Any other actions, though? Nope. All right. Same same thing. Any attacks made against the brackets at disadvantage. Well, he is incapacitated this turn, so he's just going to end his turn. But when he does, you can see him hold up his uh, his fingers, and you see that his hand has regenerated. Alright, uh, Iona. <sighs> yeah, I'm just going to short bow him again from afar. That is a miss. Ah, damn vampire. And I finish it. One day this will hit. Not today. And it's not today. Nope, not today. <laughs> <laughs> he turns around and, and bears his fangs at you. He doesn't like that you keep attacking him. Bring it well, on. Brock? I'm going to be like, well, I'm probably going to die, so why not? And I'm going to cast my last Scorching Ray. Yeah, you do. 22 is a hit. Wow. Wait, are each of the rolls supposed to be 2d6? Um. I don't know that's how it was set up, but. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes the, the spells have been funky since the update. No. Uh, just a quick check. Well, it is a level 2 spell, so that makes sense. Three rays of fire. Okay, yep. Yeah. So they're yep, each yep. 2d6. Cool. 10, 26 is what I said. Okay. And then Barkley? I'll move closer and throw another flame. Oh, another so strong, though. That's my turn. And then it'll be his turn. I'll say it, but I'm assuming it's not going to be at him. Any attacks against the Brug will be at disadvantage. Uh, no. He's going to attack you this time. So, first he's going to swipe with his claws. It's a hit for nine. And then he's going to try and bite you. And misses. Womp womp. Wow, that attack though. If he had hit with the crit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thirty one. I don't, I don't like. I don't like this. And then, and then your maximum health would have been reduced by thirty. You're like holy crap! All right, uh, Yona. Short bow. Pew. Yay. It's a hit. Roll sneak attack. Roll the one. There is no one. Okay. Hoppa. Right. How do I use inspiration? Uh, you just use it. And, like, you just say, I'm using inspiration. And then you'll have advantage on your next roll. I forgot I had I'm, that. I'm using inspiration. Can't <laughs> hit him. Wow! Okay, Yay! so it's a crit. Um, so also, since it's a hit, 
I'm going to put in Divine Smite at level 1 as well. Ooh. Okay. So yet. now... <laughs> well, I should hope so, right? Because Divine Smite against an undead creature is 3d8, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, God. And you rolled a critical. So go ahead and roll me 6d8. Don't forget to stab him in the heart. The vampire. <laughs> so, 29 radiant damage. Uh, your last and only attack, Hoppa, uh, yeah. emanates <laughs> the bright, the bright, brilliant light of, uh, uh, of all that is good, and you smash it into the vampire. The radiant flames burn his body, and he is completely immolated, and oh, he good, dies. Good. It's gone. Ah, my yep. eyes. My eyes, I cannot see. Let me do some uh, real quick mathing. Uh, 450 experience for everybody. Which, 13, sets 1350? Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay, about halfway to uh, level four. Level four, yay! All right, so the fight is over. Characters, I did something. yeah, some yay! of you are uh, <laughs> quite exhausted after the ordeal in the Undercroft. Are we all going to sleep down here? Are we going to sleep down here? Um, I don't know. It's up to you. I mean, one of us needs a long rest because he's. Looking kind of a lot more gaunt than what you was. I'm gonna go use the restroom real quick and get get some water while you guys discuss it. I will be right back. Uh, I I would assume that a long rest would be good, so he can have his uh, certain things back on his sheet. I go stand guard up top. Or you will rest, cause I'm fine. I could use a short rest. I'll take him now while we while we wait. I think it'll have to be a long rest so Debrat can get his hit hit points back. Yeah, he needs his hit can points back. That? I think we can. I thought it was like one long rest per day. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. We had the Just long rest. In the it tavern. would be a second day, wouldn't it? Because we rested It's a day, day four. So we're it's a day, a day forward four. now. Because the long rest we had was at the night time in the inn was the first long rest. And since it's a different sense, day. Yeah. yeah, since it's a different day, we should be able to have another one. Okay, well, I don't need to rest. No, I don't. But the Brack needs a long rest. Uh, yeah. I could take a short one and roll my hit, one of my hit die. So do you want to take a long rest, uh, the Brack? It is not long, one long rest per day. It's one long rest per 24 Hey, boat guy. <laughs> Ow. I'll be right back. I don't know if you guys can hear me shouting. <laughs> uh, we could barely hear you. Yeah, well, that's because I was in the kitchen. But I have my headphones on, so I can still hear you. It is uh, not one long rest per day. It's You can only benefit from one long rest within 24 hours. 24 hours, right. And so far today, you guys rested, you woke up, you went to the Burgomeister, and then you came here. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean it's like you just did a long rest yeah that, oh, okay. that's what I was thinking so I don't think we could take one but I don't know what we can do about Debrac at that point but I'm going to roll uh, uh, one of my hit die to regain some hit points in the short rest yeah you guys can take a short rest I mean you could re-roll some hit die and uh, try to recover wow that what that roll well I'm at, hit, I'm at max health <laughs> and remember you can spend any number of hit dice it's just you only will recover half of your t of them on a long rest. Yeah. Half of your total, I should say. So you're all level three. You'll recover two of them on a long rest. Uh, do you still need some healing, uh, Debrac? 
No, I think he's topped off. I think he's muted. He's probably not hitting push to talk. Oh no, he is, but his mic's not uh, speaking again. This happened last week too. Here he just yeah. just cut up. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Now we can, yeah. I don't know. I I give up on that shit. Um. No, I'm at 17 total hit points, my maximum health, because of that stupid necrotic crap. How much are you down right now? Isn't it like 6 or 10, 7? 10, 10 hit points that I'm down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I'm going to move you guys back upstairs. Since there's... Nothing down here except the dead vampire. Alright, so you come back upstairs and Donovich is standing there clasping something to his chest and, and looking at you anxiously. It has been done, Donovich. Uh, you've been gone for quite a while. I was afraid you were all dead and I was too scared to take a look. He was stronger than he looked. I wish there was some way I could repay you. I toss in my flask. Fill that up with holy water if you have any, please. Holy, holy water? Is is there water in here? And he points to the flask. Uh, it's somewhere in that room. There, there's tons of water in there. Well, I can, I can, uh, I can bless it for you and make it holy water, that but it'll perfect. take a while. Oh shit, that is gonna take a while. Eh, sure, why not? <laughs> okay. Um. I've turned to Ismark and I'll say sorry that took precedent over the current situation, and I will pick up the coffin again. I go find somewhere to bury it. Um, Dorovich says, I, I can, I can help you with this. Um, we'll have to take him outside and back. But we'll have to wait until dawn. We can't do it now. Um, is it approaching night? No, it's about midday. But he says he'll only perform the uh, burial ceremony at dawn. I'm going to look at the group and be like, I am totally fine with this. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> Didn't even realize it. He says the uh, the morning lord will only accept the uh, newly departed at the first light of morn. This, I mean, I don't think he's necessarily newly departed. This is a little newly bit departed body. <laughs> uh, you can just Set the uh, the casket in the doorway there, and we'll we'll care for it in the morning. But currently, there's uh, a couple beds in there. You're welcome to use, or you could sleep in one of the uh, pews in here. I don't want splinters. I'm gonna sleep on the tail. I'm gonna walk forward and investigate this area. Does anything look comfortable for a dwarf? You're a dwarf. Comfortable. Is comfortable. <laughs> Yeah. Um, inside the chapel, you can see it's in shambles, with overturned and broken pews littering the dusty floor. Dozens of candles mounted in candlesticks and candelabras light every dusty corner in a fervent attempt to rid the chapel of any shadows or darkness. At the far end of the church sits a, a, a claw, claw-scarred altar, behind which kneels a priest. Uh, never mind, he's not kneeling. He's, he's in right front there of me. standing in front of you, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna um, lay on the pew or on the okay. altar. Full, foolish one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna okay. lay on the stone altar. <sighs> oh, jeez, excuse me, get tired. All right, so uh, 
you guys go ahead and uh, take a long rest since the priest is being stubborn. Muhaha. And. <laughs> False rest. And as you are resting, um, you hear a large bell toll at midnight and it wakes you all up. And um, when you awake, you find that the priest is standing at the window, looking out. God damn it. That squeaky, squeaky window. Uh huh, it's a squeaky window. I will walk over into him and ask him what he's doing. Shh, be quiet. It's the march of the dead. And he points out the window beyond. I can't see out the window, I'm too small. He uh, pulls a broken piece of pew over so that you can see. Oh, thank and you. looking out the window, you oh. see an eerie green light suffuses the graveyard. From this light emerges a gross, a ghostly, ghastly procession. Wavering images of dowdy women toting great swords, woodwise men with slender bows, dwarves with glittering axes, and archaically dressed mages with beards and strange pointed hats. All of these and more march forth from the graveyard, their numbers growing by the second. Um, they all... I think we should stay in here, guys. Dwarves? Yep. Well, all, all manner of ghosts rising up from the cemetery. And they begin um, all walking in a, in a big horde down the road towards Castle Ravenloft. Don't know what to do. I'm going to step away from the window. <laughs> <laughs> Too creepy. Go back to sleep. It's safe. Yeah, the the priest turns and looks. He says, we're safe in here. As long as we don't interrupt them on their march, then we'll be fine. All right, okay. I'm going to sit on this broken pew. Okay. I'm back. Sorry about that. Oh, hello. Oh, there's, there's a bunch of ghosties outside. We just need to stay inside and leave them alone. Evil? They're just a bit floaty. Leave them alone. Uh, as long as we don't disturb them, we'll be fine. Hopper, upon looking out the window, you see several hundred ghosts all marching in a uh, ghostly procession down the road. Evil. And I'll sit down and watch. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Brock, yeah. De, De Brock is going to pull out we'll basically use the chest that he got from his Monster Hunters kit that's a um, it's not like a chest it, oh that, okay never mind then like it's, it's just a small box with a lock like you you, you know, so it's only maybe a foot one. wide no <laughs> okay if you could fit in it, how would you carry it? That's true. <laughs> Alright, so we're having a long rest, so I'll uh, retreat into my shell and go to sleep. It's midnight as well, but my... Yep, alright, so you guys go back to sleep yeah. and you wake up in the morning. Okay. Uh, in the morning, the priest makes a... Uh, an attempt to clean all the dirt and, and grime off of his robes and says, Well, come with me. I'll go with him. Let's go! I know what yeah. Somebody take the coffin. I forgot the coffin! <laughs> and he walks into the cemetery. And everyone follows him. Is Mark and uh, Hoppa this time carrying the weight of the coffin? Who am I missing? I only see 
One, two, three. We're right at the bottom. There he is. All right. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. And uh, the priest picks up some shovels on the ground and says, we're going to have to, to make him a resting place. It's fine with me, and I'll help. I'll help too. I'm too small, I'll just stand guard. I'm too small, I have to stand guard, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fall in. this guy. Alright, um, as you guys are digging, um, Donovich stands with his hands over the uh, soil and prays to the Morning Lord. And uh, d during the long ceremony, you can hear that the prayers go along the lines of asking the Morning Lord to deliver um, the Burgomeister's soul from Barovia and to finally show mercy on, on his servants. After the hole is dug, the, um, you guys load the coffin carefully into the ground and cover it back with, with soil. Donovich looks up at you guys and asks, what will you do now? We'll go back to the... Uh, We're going to go to the, the people outside of the city, right? And I look to the group, nodding, like, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go speak <laughs> to Irina. Yeah, oh, yeah, we have to let her know that. <laughs> God, every single stream, every single. I can't get one video where this Axel's not riding his motorcycle. <laughs> you have that one person in every single D&D game that God, doesn't yeah. work well with the other people. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> the stream sniper. Wait, so, what? you guys uh, head back down to Irina. Bye, yeah. priest guy. Uh, set it over there, please. Thank you. I love you too. Love you guys. I, I won't kill your character next week now. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, Reptar died. Right. <laughs> he brought me soda, Pip. Alright, anyway, so you guys travel back through the town to go see Irina, and she greets you and asks, has it been done? Is he buried? Yes. Excellent. It was a pretty nice burial. We actually burned him. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do we you mean? Really. <laughs> No, just no, we just fed him to a vampire. What? <laughs> Why would you say such terrible things? Says I don't know if I if I'd appreciate your company much at all. <laughs> Anywho, she says. So, where are we going to go? Wait, what do you mean we? Wasn't that the whole plan? No. I thought you guys to... were going to escort me out of here. Okay, let's go. I mean, <laughs> we. Totally never said that, but okay. We didn't, but we it is is Mark like speaks up. Uh, he says, "It is what we discussed," and he points to Hoppa. He's like, "We were we were going <gasps> to get her. He was, was go we were going to get Irina we, out of here so that she could be safe." To me, you said we needed to go speak to her. Uh, what? And what? you were too busy going shh all the time to remember <laughs> what you said. You no 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 no. You're mistaken, sir. We need to get her to Kresk. I'm There's an abbey there. She'll be far, safe. How far is Kresk? Oh, it's uh, not 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 far at all. It's uh, you know. It's outside the oh, town. First, first do, do, you, do you have horses for us to travel with? And do you have a really 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 strong horse for me? No, <laughs> or a car. I, I'm afraid we have nothing. <laughs> okay, so first off. You guys just sprung this on us. We're going we did. to go to these people, and I, they're the Shintavi? Shintavi? Vistani? Yeah, Vistani. You, you want to go see the Vistani? Their, uh, yeah, their camp is on the way to Kresk. 
Okay, then yeah, you're welcome. You come. <laughs> what oh, about cool. missing teenager? I never said that we would help her. <gasps> <laughs> I mean, it's a teenager, she probably just ran away. Um, could I could I go back to the inn and ask about Gertruda before we leave? Sure. I mean, yeah, we should probably do that too. We kind of did promise. You know, we have a creepy doll with us. We might yeah, we kind of yeah. <laughs> we kind of want to get rid of that creepy doll. Exactly. It don't blink. So okay. yeah, I'm gonna head back to the inn. And so you're gonna head to the inn. Yeah. And the uh, innkeeper is still there, continually washing glasses. And he looks up to you. I trust you found everything satisfactory? Yeah, it was a, a semi comfort not to my size, but that's not the point. Um, I'm, I was looking for some information if you know anyone, uh, know anything about Gertruda and her mother. Gertruda? Yeah. I recall to have seen her leaving town. Which way In did which she Which direction? Go? To the west. The only direction out of town. Well, there is an east, so not. not but much. there is nothing there but forest and fog. Why would someone from. willingly go there? I mean. I mean, that's not what we saw. Let's go. Okay, so. Just, just leave this guy with Thank you for the information, and then we'll go back and meet up with Irina and. Uh, is Mark and start heading towards Kresk, I guess. I think that's the plan, right, guys? Yes. Also, can I insight check this guy to see if he's like a robot or something? Uh, or what's wrong with him, you know? He is not a robot. Is there any way I can tell what's wrong with him? Why he's solemn and monotone? Um. At this time, I'm going to say no. Okay, so you're standing here. Do you have vision? Did I move you? I didn't. So you're standing here, um, getting ready to leave Barovia. Or the village of Barovia. No, no! And... God damn it. I am... Hey. I R E E. There she is. Irina is with you, and so is. I'm gonna look at the group and be like, "Why did we say that we take these people again?" No, I don't remember saying we would, but we we'll, didn't. Uh, we'll they we'll go to the camp. Uh, the Brock definitely said that. Oh, you can come with us then. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because you want to go to a camp, Debra, more than anything. Yeah, oh, Debrak yeah, wants right. to go see the, the Vistani, and mm -hmm. it's on the way. What's the intelligence for? Uh, accident? No, oh, okay. Alright, so as you guys begin walking, um, Irina says that we'll have to cross over the stream, and then uh, we'll come along a fork in the road. If you want to see the Vistani, you have to travel north at the fork. Cool, we're going north at the fork. <laughs> fork you. Um, right. Let me find... So, as you begin traveling along the road that leaves Barovia to the west, you come along... Where the heck is there it is um you come across a river does it have turtles in it maybe and does it have vampires in it uh no definitely not the Can... river flows as clear as the blue winter sky through the valley it's roughly 50 feet wide and um gauging 
from wh what you see, you estimate it to be about 10 feet deep. There's an arching stone bridges that span the river here, and you're informed by Ismark that there's another bridge crossing it further along the way. That is all. You said um, go north at the fork? So we go north? That'd be here, right? So oh, okay. following along the road, and then coming here, you can see the fork where it goes that way and that way. And here is the River Ivelis Crossroads. An old wooden gallows creaks in a chill wind that blows down from the high ground to the west. A frayed length of rope dances from its beam. The well-worn road splits here, and a signpost opposite the gallows points off in three directions. Barovia Village to the east, Sare Pool to the northwest, and Ravenloft slash Velaki to the southwest. The northwest folks, folks, the northwest fork slants down and disappears into the trees, while the southwest fork clings to an upward slope. Across from the gallows, a low wall, crumbling in places, partially encloses a small plot of graves shrouded in frog in fog. Damn, I can talk today. I love you, frog? Daddy Warbucks. Oh man, midterms got me like resident sleeper. What is up, Bloor? Thank you for the four months in the resub. I'm sorry that uh, your midterms got you stressed. I'm stressed too. We're actually going to be wrapping this up soon because I have to go in grade and uh, midterms mm -hmm. and get them ready for... Oh god, good luck with that. It sucks. Oh yeah. Alright, All right, so anyway. We'll, we'll head north towards the camp then. Uh, yep. not quite, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Okay. There's one more thing. Get back here. <laughs> so, so you see the old wooden gallows. And as you begin to walk away, you hear a creaking noise behind you. Coming from the gallows. Where there is nothing before, you now see a lifeless gray body. The, the breeze turns the hanged figure slowly so it can fix its dead eyes upon you. And... Will you roll initiative? No. Okay. Give me one second as I go awkwardly silent for a long time. Hmm? It's probably the missing girl. Or another vampire. Or both. Mira, where is it? Okay, I mean... Okay, as, uh, as you look upon the corpse, um, you can see that it looks incredibly rotten, as if it's been there for a long period of time. The visage is bloated, and uh, in large places the the uh, skin is falling off in chunks. Oh, tasty! For some reason, even though the visage, uh, the the scene is incredibly uh, gruesome and gory. Uh, Hoppa seems to be deep, more deeply affected than the rest of you. What's wrong, Hoppa? I mean, do you not, do you not see that? Do what? That's I mean, I me. I'm hanging right there. Do you not see that? Does it look like Hoppa? Is he telling the truth, or does it like? No. To the rest of you, it just looks like some unnamed person hanging there. Hoppa, gonna... that's that's not you. Yeah. That's um, not you. No, I definitely see myself. Nope. It's not you, you're right That's next to me, and I poke yeah. him. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just silent, shocked, and uh, slight and afraid. Hey, how about let's get you out of here, okay? Let's all grab him and pull him, uh, pull him away. Okay, yeah. the party begins to continue their trek along the northern path, but Hoppa casts one last glance towards the gallows, and when he does, you can see that there is no body hanging there at all. I, uh, I try and shake it off, but I don't think I can. I, mean, I, I just keep walking. 
I'm gonna, slap, I'm gonna slap Hoppa across the face to help. <laughs> Can you do like a medicine check on Hoppa? Um, see if okay. Well, it's it's not a physical ailment. He's just he's just a little shaken up. <laughs> does, does slapping Hoppa so across the face help? Uh, I don't know, Hoppa. How do you respond to being smacked? <laughs> well, I mean, for a start, it'd be like on my chest. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's true. Uh, I, just, I just say uh, thank you for trying, and we keep walking. Let's go, guys. I mean, I could magic pencil you across the face if that helps. Oh, God, no. <laughs> the road but, gradually... Yeah. Hold on, they left this freaking. Uh, the road gradually disappears and is replaced by a twisted, muddy path through the trees. Deep ruts in the earth are evidence of the comings and goings of wagons. The canopy of mist and branches suddenly gives way to black clouds boiling far above. There is a clearing here, next to a river that widens to form a small lake several hundred feet across. Five colorful round tents, each ten feet in diameter, are pitched outside a ring of four barrel-topped wagons. A much larger tent stands near the shore of the lake, its sagging form lit from within. Near this tent, eight unbridled horses drink from the river. The mournful stains of an accordion clash with the singing of several brightly clad figures around a bonfire. Damn bots. A footpath continues beyond this encampment, meandering north between the river and the forest edge. Can they see us? Hello? Yes, you've made no effort to conceal yourself, so they can see you. Hello? I'm hidden between uh, everyone. No one can see me. <laughs> and ah. walking up... Um... <laughs> Not you. You get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here, rubber broke. That was way too long. Yeah. Is anybody good at stealing things? I am. Why? Would you like to steal a horse? No. I can't. Stop it. There we go. No. I would like a horse. <laughs> I want a horse. No. <laughs> I'm just like itching towards the horse. <laughs> we can bargain for one. Have you seen right. how many there is? How many horses? No, there's like five guys. Ah, uh, no, so the top of his there's head. not. Is there there more? is way more than there is way more than five guys. Uh. I personally can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys. Oh, I, I got, I got a crappy sight. On As me. they see you all <laughs> standing there, oh, yeah. um, one of the Vistana call out to you. Come. Join us by the fire. Actually, I take it back. I can see nine guys. I'll walk across. I'll join them. Yeah. I'll walk into the tent, yeah, will you? I'll join them, too. <laughs> okay. I'll stay back. I'll stay with the horses. There are <laughs> 12 Vistani here. Uh, males and females alike. Standing around the fire... Drinking wine and telling stories. They, many of them are already quite intoxicated. And uh, they are very welcoming and pleasant to the company. There's females? Yeah, the pictures only show males because they <laughs> suck. And I'll, uh, sorry. Um, I'll speak to one and I'll be like, I was told we could get supplies and something about a fortune teller here. Oh, yes, yes. But first, uh, you have to hear this. This is a great, great tale. It's wonderful. 
I right, probably so there's, already heard it. There's one uh, uh, Visanti standing above the rest, and he begins to talk in a grand uh, voice. He says, Once, a mighty wizard came to the land over a year ago. I remember it like yesterday. He stood exactly where you're standing, and he points to Hoppe. A very charismatic man he was. He thought he could rally the people of Barovia against the Devil's Strahd. He stirred them with thoughts of revolt and bore them to the castle in Mass. When the vampire appeared, the wizard's peasant army fled in terror. A few stood their ground and were never seen again. The wizard and the vampire cast spells at each other. Their battle flew from the courtyards of Ravenloft to a precipice overlooking the falls. I saw the battle with my own eyes. Thunder shook the mountainside, and great rocks tumbled down upon the wizard. Yet by his magic, he survived. Lightning from the heavens struck the wizard, and again he stood his ground. But when the devil's strahd fell upon him, the wizard's magic could not save him anymore. I saw him thrown a thousand feet to his death. I climbed down to the river to search for the wizard's body, to see if, you know, he had anything of value. But the river Iblis had already spirited him away. The rest of the Vistani begin to hoot and holler and clap each other on the back. And they're like, oh, a wonderful tale. Wonderful. How is this wonderful? Is he telling the truth or not? Are you trying to determine? Yeah, that's why I rolled insight. He believes to be telling the truth. Cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, you ask how that's a wonderful tale and the Vistana turn and look at you and they say, this is what we do to pass the time. We tell tales both wonderful and strange and, and it helps to make the day more interesting. I mean, if you want a tale, we killed a, uh, a horror, a shambling horror. That sounds wonderful! Tell us! No, no. I'm gonna go into explicit I... long detail about how I single-handedly killed this shambling no, 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 no. Don't sum up. Start your story. Come on. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be like, yes. <clears throat> I was standing. I was standing there in this dungeon of this really haunted house with my party here, and they were all dead, laying lifeless on the ground. I wow! Stood the and they hold you. A, they hand true. you a cup of wine. I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> hold it. And I'm going to be like, dead. they were unconscious, and I stood there before this monster. I looked it straight in the eyes, and I said that they today was not the day that my friends were going to die. And I held out my hand, and I cast a spell, and it went up in flames. And okay, then, roll a uh, uh, performance check, check, please. No, performance. Oh, performance? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, um, the the Vistana, their their mood seems to turn a bit, and they're all yelling, "Bullshit! You're <laughs> full of it!" <laughs> I, mean, I know, right? I mean, I hold up the, I hold up the, uh, I hold up the spell book. Well, I got this from it, so it's not one hundred percent bullshit. Ah, oh, sit down, little man. Let's hear another tale from someone else. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Which one of them said that? Uh, it, it's it's a general murmur coming wow. from the group. Right. Um, <laughs> can I ask one who I need to speak to about this fortune telling? Oh, you wish to see Madame Eva. She's in the tent right over there, and he points behind you. And I'll uh, I'll I'll saunter off over there, and I'll let these guys continue their tale telling. Okay. I'm gonna go with him, depressed and sad. <laughs> and, uh, as, as we as we walk together today, and I say, it's your own fault for coming up with such shit. You know what really happened that day, the, the other day. Yeah, we all died, and the only one to save us was the little girl out there. Precisely. <laughs> all right, so everybody's gonna pile into Madame Eva's tent because I said so. But but but, skin horses. Magic flames cast a reddish glow over the interior of the tent. 
Shit. Revealing a low table covered in a velvet cloth. Glints of light seem to flash from a crystal ball on the table as a hunched figure peers into its depths. As the crone speaks, her voice crackles like dry weeds. At last, you finally arrived. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh. Is she a vampire? <laughs> They're all vampires. She was kind of evil. Are you not going to pull out the mirror? I was waiting for you to pull out the mirror. I was waiting oh. for as well. <laughs> Oh, You're slipping, man. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay. That storytelling thing got me off my game. <laughs> so you pull out the mirror and you hold it up, and no, she is not a vampire. Okay. So she turns and surveys the party, and she says, Oh, how I've waited for you. Iona. The orphan, so good for you to finally come. Hi. A and you, Hoppa, mighty paladin, hailing all the way from Chalt. How does Helm and your worship guide you now? Very well. And then she turns to Debrock. I says, shake my head before she can say anything. No, I know you, <laughs> both of you, and the tortures you've endured, young dwarf. With both of you? And you, I, I Tiefling. I wonder how long will you wander? How long before you're finally satisfied and find a place of your own? She says, yes. Madam Eva has seen many things. So now, why do you stand before me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like I'm kind of my fortune to be told. She says, "Hi, I can help you. I will give you guidance if you seek it." I do. I'm gonna hold up the spell book and be like, "All I wanted to do was sell this and maybe buy some stuff, but I mean." But I no. Got, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. Is the screen black? Do you guys have vision? Oh, uh, we have vision. I, I have vision. Okay. I see a thingy. A thingy. A thingy. You're, you're looking yeah. down at the table and ah. when she gestures you to pay attention. She says, I am going to read your fortunes with the Arakoa deck. She says, hopefully you find my uh, reading illuminating. And come on now. Is this a deck of many things? Please say yes. No. Aww. It's a deck of cards for the Curse of Strahd. Okay, so first. Ooh. She takes the card and sets it on the table. Ah, there we go. I can see it now. Yep. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. All right. I I, I've been. I. You don't understand how much anxiety this part has has given me because I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna make this work? <laughs> okay. So she hands it to you, and places it on the table, face up. Face up. And I have to flip through my notes forever and ever. And she says, "Ooh, the Four of Swords." The mercenary. The thing you seek lies with the dead under mountains of gold coins. I'm looking for the next one. The five of coins. I see a dark room full of bottles. It is the tomb of a guild member. The hooded one. I'm 
So far, so good. Gonna jinx it now. I said that. What could mm -hmm. go wrong? The Back Seven half? of Swords. I see a faceless god. He awaits you at the end of a long and winding road, deep within the mountains. Well, I mean, we are kind of new that, but... Alright. And now... Don Juan. Don John. The King of Clubs. Search for a, a troubled young man, surrounded by wealth and madness. His prison is his home. And if you find him, he should help you. The Dark Lord. It spoke too soon. Eh, it's not a bad card. Ah, the worst of all the truths. You must face the evil of this land alone. I mean, I'm okay with that. Yes, he lurks in the depths of darkness, in the one place to which he must return. Heed my advice, even though you may not understand it, but this will guide you along your journey to defeat Strahd and return to your homes. I know you guys probably don't recall everything that was said, so um, on that note, we're going to wrap it up for today. I know Sounds that's good. A, um, and then I will write in a handout what the Erico reading said mm -hmm. and I'm going to leave this page as it is so then you can always have it for reference okay yep okay that's cool okay yeah. and then when we pick up on the next time um you guys will be still in the Vishanti camp and then you'll be leaving from there going to where the hell you're going and right, we'll be level 20. Yeah, and you'll be level... No, that won't happen. <laughs> I'm going to mute Discord for a minute. I'm going to sign off. And then uh, then I'll be able to help you guys with anything you need. Alrighty, everyone. Uh, that's going to be it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. We had a lot of fun. If you did enjoy the stream, make sure you hit that follow button. If you haven't already, go underneath the stream there's links to twitter and facebook follow me on one of those platforms so you get notifications about stream events and giveaways um in two weeks november the 4th we're doing a 24-hour marathon to raise money for children's miracle network hospitals uh we also have DD &D every week saturday and sunday and this week on friday as well because alex got his shit together finally and <laughs> um i'll see you next time bye everybody